Hi, I'm Mel Brown and welcome to The Love Project. I'm here with Tom Martin today, a candidate in the upcoming mayoral election. Please give a warm welcome to Tom Martin. <laughs> nice to meet with you today, Tom. Nice to meet you, Mel. Alright, so my first question for you is how could the city better support youth programs? How could the city better support youth programs? Yes. I think what we have to do is we have to have more involvement at the municipal level from our youth and for the city to actually yes we I can give you the regular answers recreation arts culture absolutely we can certainly refund that in in, in HRM uh, just in, our, in arts and culture alone where we are in Canada it is roughly five dollars and we'll say fifty cents per capita that the average Canadian contributes to arts and culture. In HRM, we contribute contribute about five cents. So it's we have to start putting more um, more resources into that. But so that's sort of my answer to that one. All right, that's a pretty good answer, I'd say. Um, so what would you see as the number one problem in Halifax, and what do you suppose you're going to do about it? In my opinion, the number one problem we have in HRM is that we have a trust issue. And the trust issue is this. Regional Council and the Mayor do not have the level of trust. They do not have the level of respect from the citizens of this municipality. That's not the citizens' fault. That's as a result of how council has come across how the mayor has come across recently over the last eight years so or so um, so we have to regain that level of trust back from the people that we serve we are we are elected officials that means we serve the people of this municipality that's who we work for and that level of trust has been damaged over the years regardless of who the next mayor is they can come in with plan A, plan B, plan C. But if the people of this municipality don't trust council, and the people of this municipality don't have any faith in council, then it doesn't matter what plans you bring in, it's not gonna fly. All right. Um, how, could you better, how could the city better include the history of minorities in Halifax public programming? By making all minorities a part of, by giving all minorities a voice, by allowing by embracing our diversity, embracing who we are and our differences, and recognizing that the differences that each one of us brings is what makes us us. And how do we do that? We do that by giving people a voice, funding more, funding more for uh, things like the Multicultural Festival, funding more for uh, different uh, all the different cultural events and, and festivals that we have, um, be, the, be the, the Im different Im immigrant communities, um, African Canadian community, uh, uh, our, our uh, Native Canadian community, I mean all of those, actually facilitating the celebration of that culture because that culture is our culture. It's what we are made up of. It's our history. And history is a part of us. Alright, and on a completely different note, getting away from the programming in the city. The bus service really sucks. What can you do to, what can you do to improve it? A few things. Um, my first thought on that, Mel, is what we need is we need a regional integrated transportation authority. We need that. And what that is, is, is the municipality working with the province to create one authority that oversees all our, tra our public transportation needs. Right now we have buses and we have ferries. I want to expand on that. The Halifax Harbor is a natural transportation corridor. It's been used for hundreds of years, back, dating back to the 1700s, even before that. And we're not capitalizing on that corridor. Halifax itself is almost completely surrounded by water. And all one side, we have over 400 kilometers of coastline in HRM. That's a lot of coastline. That is a lot of coastline. And we can utilize that. And how we can utilize that is by taking advantage of that corridor of transportation. That means the transportation. We can do it with, with expanding ferries. We can do it with water taxis. All over the world they have water taxis. We don't have them here. 
Like water, what water taxis do is they create jobs. Because you partner with the private sector, right? You partner with the province. We have people running water taxis. It's more employment. It, it, it pushes the entrepreneurial spirit. It encourages people to get into business for themselves. So that's one way. The other way is we talk about buses and we talk about schedules and, and, and a lot of people are constantly complaining the buses are always late. I can speak for a fact. They are always late. Especially, yeah. And, and, and we're looking at, at youth. We're looking at our students, our young people, our elderly, and our people that, that can't afford to own a car. So those are the, are the people that we have to really focus on and being providing a means for them to be able to get around the municipality. It has to be there. The issue with the buses is if we have buses at peak hours running as often as I want them to run, you won't even need a schedule. Because if you miss a bus, it's only a few more minutes before another one comes along. And that's, a, not, that's not all the time, that's at peak hours. We have a municipality, and by, when I say a, a, an urban core, I mean inside the circumferential highway in Dartmouth side and on the peninsula in Halifax side. We have a, a downtown core that is open 24 hours a day. No question about that. The public transportation stops at 1.30 in the morning. I've worked in, in the, the private sector and I had over 1,000 employees answering that I was responsible for. And I had many that had to refuse work because they did not have a means to get to and from because transit was shut down for the night. The problem with the, the issues with violence in the downtown core, people can't get out of the downtown core after the bars are closed. No buses, there's no public transportation. Limited number of taxis. So we have to expand on our, on our public transportation system and we have to look at it more than just buses. If you're elected, how would you encourage youth, um, encourage youth involvement in politics? I like that question a lot because that comes into what is called the Youth Council. Youth Council was set up several years ago at City Hall. Uh, the problem is it's been set up long enough, but it has never, ever been enacted. I've never even heard of it. There you go. That's the problem with it. And what it is, what it's designed for is it's designed to engage youth in the municipal process and give that the youth that voice to council. All right, I would get that set up immediately and get it rolling as fast as I possibly could. All right. Um, our last question for you today is, how would you improve the selection and training of police officers? I wouldn't. It's not my mandate. Funny. <laughs> what I would do, what I would do is this. I'm not aware um, of any major flaws, but I've been retired for a few years now from the police department. Yeah. If the, when I read that question, I thought, what's behind this? There's something behind this. There's, there's a reason why this question is being asked, and I don't know what that reason is. But if we have youth council, if we have groups like this one that have a voice. And if we have elected officials that are willing to listen to that voice, you'll tell us. There's no doubt in my mind, you will tell us. Especially youth today, you will tell us what the problems are. All right, well, thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. You're welcome.